Notes payable. It seems like we've talked about this before, haven't we? Wait, that was notes receivable. They are the opposite sides of the same coin. If you have a note receivable on your books, someone else has a note payable on theirs. When we discussed notes receivable, we were the one that the money was owed to. With notes payable, we are the ones that owe the money. It's important not to get these two accounts mixed up. Always remember who you are recording the transactions for. The person who should be repaid or the person who will be paying. That will determine whether you're recording a notes receivable or a notes payable. Like notes receivable, notes payable can be issued for multiple reasons. We might have had an accounts payable that we needed more time to pay and converted it to a notes payable. We record this with a debit to accounts payable and a credit to notes payable. We may have purchased goods or services on a note. We would record this with a debit to inventory or an expense account related to the service, such as repairs and maintenance expense, and a credit to notes payable. Or we could have borrowed money. We would record this as a debit to cash and a credit to notes payable. And like notes receivable, the big difference between accounts payable and notes payable is interest. Remember our interest formula, P times R times T. This stands for principal times rate times time. The principal or face amount is how much the note was issued for. The rate is the interest rate. Also remember that this interest rate is stated as an annual percentage amount. The time is a fraction of the year that you're calculating interest for. If you were calculating interest for seven months, the time component would be seven twelfths. If you put a seven in the formula instead, you would be calculating interest for seven years. So be careful to always have the T as a portion of a year, either by using months, something divided by 12, like five twelfths, or by using days, something divided by 365, like 60 over 365. Let's do a few examples to jog our memory on interest calculations. Assume we had a note for $12,000 at 4% interest for three months. We would take the $12,000 and multiply it by 4%, that's 0.04 as a decimal, and then multiply it by 3 twelfths. That would equal $120. Or assume we had a $75,000 note at 8% interest for 12 months. We would multiply $75,000 by 8% or 0 0.08 and then by 12 twelfths. Or we could just use one instead of 12 twelfths at it, as it is for a full year. The total interest for this note is $6,000. Let's do one more. Assume we have $38,000 note at 5% interest for 60 days. We would take $38,000, multiply it by 5%, 0.05, and then multiply by 60 over 365. This would equal approximately $312.33. The date that the note is due is called the maturity date. Notes can state this date explicitly or can simply provide the term of the note. For example, a note issued on January the 1st may state that it is due on March 31st, or state that it's a three month note. Where it really gets fun is when the note term is stated in days. Let me give you an example. Let's say a note was issued on May 1st and the term is 45 days. When is the maturity date? June 15th. How'd I get that answer? Let's walk through it. The note term is 45 days. The note was issued in May. May has 31 days. If the note was issued on May 1st, there are 30 days left in May. When we subtract those 30 days, we have 15 left. The following month is June, and it has more than 15 days in it. Therefore, the note is due on June 15th. Let's try one more. What if the note was issued on March the 10th and the term was 180 days? When is the maturity date? Hit the pause button and figure out an answer. Oh, come on now, hit the pause button and try it. Okay, let's check the answer. The term was 180 days. The note was issued on March 10th. There are 21 days left in March. Keeping up with how many days we have left, that will take us all the way until September until we need six more days to equal 180. The maturity date is September the 6th.
The amount that you pay back when the note is due is the principal plus the interest. This is called the maturity value. Let's record the payment of a note. Assume we borrowed $100,000 on February the 1st. The note term was nine months and had an interest rate of 6%. What's the maturity value? This will be $100,000 principal plus the interest. So let's calculate the interest. Using our formula of P times R times T, we would take the $100,000 times 6% or 0 0.06 and multiply that by 9 twelfths. This equals $4,500. Therefore, the maturity value is $104,500. $100,000 of principal plus $4,500 of interest. To record the payment of the note, we would debit notes payable for $100,000. We only record the principal amount in the note account, so that's all we can decrease or take out of that account. And we want to decrease all of it as we're paying it off and we will no longer owe it. We also need to record the interest of $4,500. Since we owe the note, this is the cost of us borrowing the money. Therefore, we would debit interest expense for $4,500. All that is left is to record how much we paid in total. We would credit cash for $104,500. Notes payable can be current or long-term liabilities. The difference depends on when it's due as of the financial statement date. If we're making up the year-end financial statements as of December the 31st and a note is due within the next year, then it would be considered a current liability. If, however, we have a note that is not due until after the following year, that would be considered a long-term liability.